the start of the rally was closer to home for us this year. So we decided to make up a little 80k off-road route to take us across to Edinburgh. So are you ready for Rome 2.0? <laughs> Ready as will ever be. Some of our uh, fellow riders that are riding from the south of England and <laughs> have come from Canada, uh, the Netherlands, Germany. And are riding there too, so we really have no excuse. The main GPX file is called the Rugged Route and that is the long distance route, the full Rome Scotland rally for that year. There is a secondary route, the details of which are in the rider information pack, that allows you to detour on each day but come back to the same point where the long route would finish on each day, which means that riders can maybe take a slightly shorter, slightly less hilly option to recover, maybe if they've had a few whiskies the night before in one of the social gatherings, or if they're just feeling a little bit under the weather or they have a mechanical issue. On our way, we were inundated with messages from the group chat, everybody making their way to the start, including our German friends, and they were sending some hilarious messages. They're some of the funniest guys in the rally, and we were really looking forward to seeing them again. <laughs> the Pipers are coming. We are on our way on the Pilgrim's Way. <laughs> Look forward to seeing you. Couldn't wait to get started, so... Oh, my watch has just detected an incident. <laughs> <laughs> so the morning of the rally, we're packing up our tents and we're getting ready to go down to the official start at a cafe by the meadows in the Edinburgh city centre. But Tony pulled out his phone and saw a message and none of us could believe it. Overnight, at the same campsite, the Germans, all their bikes have been stolen. Three top-end bikepacking rigs with equipment attached. They couldn't participate and they weren't joking. This was a devastating blow for nobody more so than them, but for everybody else who knew them and was looking forward to riding with them and the spirit of the event was just a bit broken. We stayed around the campsite that morning. We tried to help them. There was nothing we could really do. Um, Steve and myself and Lindsay, we rode around the campsite checking all the bushes and all the peripheral trails nearby just in case something had been dumped by the thieves. But unfortunately where the guys had been staying was just on the edge of the campsite and the thieves had just come in across the fields and cut the locks and stolen the equipment. Absolutely devastating and so disappointing that this is how the cyclists that have come from abroad to visit and participate in a cycling event in our country are treated. So there was a small cluster of us at the back, toddled off on our way to Kelso. There's our first big climb. That was a long climb with one of the steeper sections in the rally for day one. 
But once over the top, past the wind turbines, we headed down into Kelso. There was no fine dining for us on night one. We were knackered. We headed straight to Littles and had our dinner in the town park. We had a look at the map to see where we might go to stay for the night. On the route, there wasn't a lot of options. There was a lot of agriculture and it was more climbing. Having a look around though, I saw the river Tevia headed in the direction of Jedbra, which was on the rolling route. The first bit was going to be a little bit more single track by the river, but we thought we might get a little camp spot down there, and we did. Well, good morning for the day two of Rome Rally, from leaving from just outside Kelso this morning. Um, and we've, we've branched off and deviated a little bit from the official route just to find a bit more of a mountain bike friendly option and um, hopefully we've stumbled upon some gold here with yeah. it's, uh, We're on the line to Jidbra which is hopefully going to be our first coffee stop of the day as long as they're open early <laughs> uh, We had actually had a little lie in, someone suggested breakfast in bed which included some croissants and iced coffee uh, So we're... Class plan Yeah, so the cafes will be open in Jidbra by the time we get there <laughs> format of the rally? Well, it is a non-competitive event. There is no entry fee, just a registration just to let Callum know who, how many people to expect on the first day. So without an official race entry, there is an opportunity to make a small donation in return for the effort that Callum has put into creation of the route and a very detailed route guide and rider information pack. So each year he selects a charity and this year we are really delighted because Lindsay put forward the suggestion of the talking tandem. Lindsay's regular stoker Louise and her will give you a little chat about that later on in the video. Back in Scotland. Oh, I'm done in. Welcome to England. Welcome to Scotland. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> well done. That was a cracking day. Day three was always going to be the tough leg of this Rome rally. 
It was a flatter day, but it was long and there was the most amount of tarmac and roads out of the rally in the one day. So this was a bit of a bridging day between the hills in the east and moving across to the forests in the west. So we got the heads down and we did it. We are always motivated and inspired when we see other people's videos on YouTube of interesting places and bikepacking adventures. And one of those people that we follow is called Simon Willis, who runs a channel called Always Another Adventure. After passing Dumfries and heading towards Cleverlock Castle on the Solway Firth, we bumped into Simon and his wife Liz. It was a great opportunity to catch up and exchange a little bit of stories about making videos. This is a great example of the benefit of having the rolling route and the rugged route, as we were able to catch up before they headed off in a different direction. I've had a sneak peek of Simon's video, and if you would like to see a different perspective of the Rome Scotland Rally this year, I highly recommend it, and I'll put a link at the end of the video. For day three, although the guide suggests Gatehouse of Fleet as an official stop, that was a little bit far for us. So we settled in Castle Douglas and found a little quiet spot just outside. The next day, day four, we headed down into Gatehouse of Fleet where we had a huge breakfast. After breakfast, we were soon caught by Elaine and Tony. They had actually been in this area only a few days before to participate in the Gralach, about a 120 kilometer UCI qualifying gravel race. They're nuts. They then appeared the next day at the start to begin the Rome Scotland rally. So we rode with them for the afternoon, which was really nice. This is Louise from Talking Tandems. Uh, Louise is my, one of my regular stokers. Could you tell us a little bit about Talking Tandems, what it is, 
So Talking Tandems is a tandem club that is set up to help visually impaired and blind people get out to cycle. Uh, we do a few, we do one-to-one -one rides, that's when a pilot goes out with you know, a stoker on a one-to-one -one basis. And we also do two group rides a month. So there's always a, there's always a, a stop for a coffee and for lunch. Very important. <laughs> and and very important. <laughs> plenty of banter and yeah. plenty of cheek, usually. <laughs> <laughs> we did our overnight stay over in Perth um, in May and we're due to do a few days in the borders. What does what does the talking tandems mean for you personally? It means a great deal actually because it's um, I I was never really a cyclist if I'm honest. Um, I lost my eyesight when I was in my teenage years, but I never had good eyesight. So I was never really on a bike when I was a child. I never had that opportunity. I got into talking tandems because I was actually looking for a way to get fit. I had quite a sedentary lifestyle, mm -hmm. I would say. Mm -hmm. I, I wasn't doing a lot of exercise. I was a bit of walking, but nothing. Not a lot of exercise. In the winter I go in a turbo trainer to try and keep my fitness up for yeah. time because I quite like doing the kind of longer run. It's good for just for mental health really. Um, it's good to get out. There's a, there's a sense of freedom that you get on yeah. the bike. Well, I think, really I think everyone else. finds that with cycling, don't they? The bike yeah. is um, a vehicle of freedom for, for everyone. Yeah. There there are a few clubs like, like ours. If, if there's um, cyclists out there that are, have an interest either in um, piloting um, the tandems yeah. or um, cyclists with visual impairment, then there may be there may be clubs in yeah. different different places. Certainly in Scotland, um, we've got we've got a few. I would just like to say a big thank you though to everybody who donated to Rome Scotland and also to the organisers in Rome Scotland like Callum who chose us to be their sponsor charity for 2023. Yeah. We raised over two thousand pounds. It's meant a great deal to our club because we are just a small club and. You know, just having that money that we could Brilliant, use if we it? need any parts of bikes replaced because a lot of our upkeep is actually on maintaining bikes yeah, yeah. and insurance and all the kind of mundane stuff that people don't really think about. Absolutely. It's made a huge difference to our club and we're really grateful for everybody who's actually given money. Massive, massive thanks to, to Callum and, to, and yeah. to all the rumours. Yeah, thank you guys. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, we had to make a tactical decision. There was a loop out to the west which promised some of the best gravel riding of the trip. However, we still had a lot of miles to go and we didn't just have to get back to Edinburgh. We had another 80 kilometers to do to get back to Fife and we had to do it within the same time frame. So we headed in the direction of New Galloway, which was our supposed finish for the night, but the legs were still feeling fresh and we were a little ahead of time. So we pushed on another 30K to a small village called Penpont which actually had a campsite, which had electrics and showers and everything, which was a great point to stop. So having had a good shower and a fine pitch for the night, we started day five feeling somewhat more refreshed. We set off up around Drumlandry Castle. And over the moors, past the wind turbines, the gravel roads up there were baked dry and almost white and reflecting the heat of the sun. It wasn't even midday, but the heat was beginning to become unrelenting. We dropped into Moffat just before noon. So we opted for a long lunch and stayed under the shelter of a gazebo in the garden of the Balmoral Hotel. We also used that time to take a little look at the maps. Riding our mountain bikes for so many kilometres, I had always hoped that we would find a little opportunity to take a diversion and make the most of the bikes we had on the trip. It was at Moffat, which is surrounded by some nice steep hills, that we saw our opportunity for a wild camp at the top of one of the mountains and then an opportunity to descend some nice single track. And although there was no official route marked on the map, it looked like we might be able to rejoin the route by descending down one of the valleys. We did that little trip and we made a little separate video about it, a spin-off from the Rome Scotland Rally, and that is linked at the end of this video. So on day six, we woke up on top of our mountain. We had our nice single track descent and we descended down the valley 
and rejoined the route. But we rejoined the rolling route because it went up past the lock of the Lowe's and there was a roadside cafe there for a full cooked breakfast. At the cafe we used the time to consider what route we were going to take home because we were not going to be finishing in Edinburgh. We made a beeline north and headed for the Pentland Hills for one last night of a wild camp before we would drop back down round the outskirts of Edinburgh and across the bridge and home. If you've never heard or seen anything about the Rome Scotland Rally, you may well be wondering what it is. It's based on an already established rally called the Torino to Nice, and this takes in high alpine mountain passes from Italy all the way down to the ocean in France. It covers around about 700 kilometres and on average takes around seven days. And Scottish cyclist Callum Munro, who'd been given a few pokes by his wife Harriet to get out there and give it a go, was so blown away by the format of the event, the relaxed style, the social atmosphere, the regular sort of points along the route to stop where people regrouped and talked and talked about their journey and their experience, was such a positive outcome that he knew Scotland had all the goods to deliver such an event. He just needed to create a route. So he set himself about that task and actually has gone on to create multiple routes of around about 700 kilometres that cover some of the most beautiful landscaped areas in Scotland. So in 2019, the first rider set off from Edinburgh and headed to Inverness. That event was a success and it was repeated last year in 2022 when Lindsay and I participated in the Room Scotland Rally of the West Coast, which was an outstanding adventure and is covered in a seven part series. With a playlist will be attached to the end of this video. So what about accommodation? Where do you stay? Is it all wild camping? Can you stay in campsites? Can you stay in hotels? Can you just ride with a credit card? All those answers are yes. So if you want to book accommodation ahead of time and it is 100k a day roughly, you can do so. You can have a five star hotel at the end of every night if you wish. Or you can go to the other end of the spectrum, camp in a hammock in between some trees and a forest. It is entirely up to you. Well, that's a wrap from us. Um, cheerio to all the roamers. Hope you've all had a smashing trip and uh, massive thanks to Callum um, for putting together another awesome route. Hope to see you all next year. As always, thank you for watching and if you would like to see the rally from another perspective, please either click the link to Simon's video here or pop along to his channel, Always Another Adventure. We also have our 2022 rally playlist and our little excursion into the hills for a wild camp by Moffat.